Hello everyone. Uh, this is the uh, second video lecture of uh, chapter 28. I will be covering um, the RC circuit. The RC stands for uh, a resistor and capacitor. In this course you will be studying three types of circuit. The RC circuit, the LC circuit, and the RLC circuit. LC, L here stand for an inductor which is something that we will cover when we cover um, uh, magnetism. And so uh, so you have those three types of circuit. The one that I generally cover is just the RC circuit. I leave the others for you to read on your own. Uh, the reason is because they're very similar in structure. So if you understand one, you should be able to teach yourself the others. Uh, so anyway, uh, your book unfortunately doesn't do justice for covering the RC circuit. I am looking at the hard copy here and it's only really two pages. Uh, starts from page 784 and it ends on page 785 and the coverage is really superficial. So I'm just going to give you a good lecture on that. Um, an RC circuit or a circuit that is composed of a um, resistor and a capacitor and a switch. It looks something like that. Okay, this is the, this is the picture on the book. So you have a resistor and you have a capacitor and the switch is initially open which means there are no charges on the capacitor okay and uh, there should be a power source here um, I'm looking at the wrong circuit uh, you wanted to add a power source anyway uh, let me just I my lecture is going to be totally coming out of my uh, my lecture notes not from the book let me redraw this circuit uh, better on the notepad here so what you will have is the following. Let, let me just give me a second to draw it for you, and then we'll talk about it. So uh, I have a, an EMF here, a battery or a power source, and I have here is a capacitor. And then down here, I have the resistor like that. So this is the resistor. This is the capacitor. And what you're seeing here, those three circles, uh, you have a switch, OK? Here is the switch right here. And uh, I am the switch. I can put the switch at point A or point B. Point A a little bit far away. Let me Let me delete that. Get it just a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. Here's point A. So uh, you can. This is the switch, and the switch can go can switch between point A and point B. Notice that if I take the switch and put it on A, so in this case you will have here. Let me just put it like that. What will happen is that you have a battery and it's connected to the circuit. Okay. This branch doesn't mean anything here, right? And of course, if I take it and put it on switch B. That means I have isolated the battery. The battery is no longer there, you sort of thing. So, uh, so what we will do, oops, I have a sensitive eraser here. Uh, so initially, so what I'm going to do, so let me just say, so we have initially uh, capacitor, CAP. Uh, initially uh, uncharged, OK? So we're starting with an uncharged capacitor. Uh, so this means, therefore, this means that no current I, okay, uh, in the circuit, makes sense. And while, of course, what I'm saying is while S is open. Okay. Now let's assume at time equals zero. Uh, at time equals zero, uh, I put the switch on A. Okay. So I'm going to take the switch throw it on A and now I have a circuit basically an RC circuit I have a resistor and I have a capacitor and then you have the uh, the EMF okay EMF right here electromotive force so what can happen instantly at the moment I, I, I throw the switch the current will start uh, 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 going through the circuit so you will have a current and this current will start charging the capacitor okay so in other words, the, the uh, increase in the charge of the capacitor is a gradual process, okay? 
So in other words, it takes time until the capacitor is fully charged. Okay, this is very important to keep that in mind. Okay, however, the moment I close the switch, the voltage across the resistor is instantly, okay, instantly is uh, uh, EMF, E, here, okay? In other words, uh, let's assume that this resistor is a light bulb, okay? And the moment I uh, close the switch, that light bulb is lit quickly, okay? It's lit immediately where the voltage of that light bulb is equal to the EMF, got it? However, the capacitor, it takes it a while to charge. In other words, it will start charging, gradually charge. Of course, the whole thing goes into a, within a millisecond, okay? But it does, it's not instantaneous, okay? So it starts charging gradually, okay? So let me just write what's going on here. So we have the moment, so when S goes to A, uh, charge uh, begins to flow Uh, then setting up a current um, in the circuit I'm trying to adjust the keyboard here setting up a current in the circuit uh, and then capacitor CAP uh, begins to charge until until uh, capacitor is completely completely full okay fully charged that is okay completely full so basically at uh, so in, uh, we, in this case that means maximum charge maximum Q uh, has been is is reached. I'd say. Okay, now what happened when the maximum charge is reached? Well, in this case, the potential across the capacitor. The potential across the capacitor will be equal to the potential across the EMF, the battery. Okay, so in this case, once the two potentials are equal, what will happen? Well, there is no current. You see what I'm saying? Current flows only if there is a difference in potential. You see what I'm saying? So once, so when I close, so let me let me repeat it again. When I close the switch, current begins to flow from the battery, from the EMF, and then while it is flowing, it is basically uh, the capacitor is charging, so the charge is increasing. As a result of that, the as the charge is increasing, uh, you remember charge is equal to CV. Remember that Q equals CV. The charge is equal to the capacitance of the capacitor, which is maybe a constant number for that particular capacitor. And V here is a variable, okay? Uh, Q here is a variable. I mean, the charge is a function of time. You can think of it like as a function of time. C and the voltage also as a function of time. Until the, the voltage is equal to E, in this case, and then the current will stop. So here, let me go back here, it says... Um, Capacitor begins uh, begins to charge until capacitor completely full. This may basically means the maximum charge is reached, and this implies that the current is no longer there in the circuit, so it goes to zero. There is no current in the circuit. The current stops. Got it? Okay. And of course, delta V across the capacitor. Let me call it for now delta V sub C uh, is equal to the maximum value, which is what the EMF. Okay, so here is what I want to do. Oh, by the way, before I move, please copy this circuit uh, in your, uh, uh, you know, on a piece of paper because I'm I, I'm going to be coming back to it for the next forty minutes or so. So I, I don't want to be scrolling up and down for it. So just uh, when I say go back to the figure, let's call it figure one. Okay, figure one. Please copy it right now keep it handy because I'm not going to be coming back to it. I'm just going to be using my note to come back to it. Okay. So what I want to do now is the, so that's basically the idea of what's happening. How do you charge a capacitor in an RC circuit? So what I want to do, I want to do the mathematics of all of that. Now, while the uh, capacitor is being charged, while cap is being charged, okay, well, let's talk about is being, I spelled it, I spelled it wrong, being charged. 
So what's going on here? Okay. So basically, let me let me redraw it in a simplified way. So here is the capacitor, here is the uh, the resistor, and of course here is the battery. Okay. This is the MF, and let's say at some arbitrary time, at some time, at time t, at any arbitrary time during the charging process. Okay. During the charges charging process. So at some time t. The voltage here is V, the voltage here is E, or shall we just say IR for now, okay? Remember Ohm's law, the voltage across the uh, resi resistor is IR, and then you have the EMF, okay? So I want to use Kirchhoff. I want to come up with the equation for the circuit. So use Kirchhoff equation, the one we dealt with in the previous video. So in this case, when I, you know, I can start, uh, let's say from here, and I'm going this way, I'm going this way, okay? Uh, let's say I start from here, and I'm going counterclockwise. So in this case, I'm going to have E minus the charge V uh, minus IR equals zero, okay? I'm going to box this equation, call it star. Okay. Now V here, of course, is the charge. Excuse me, the voltage across the capacitor. So that will be E, E minus uh, Q over C. And I intentionally make it small Q because the small Q, uh, think of it like um, it, it is a variable. So it is a function of time. You know what I mean? Okay. For now, we're just gonna use this notation for now temporarily. Okay, so this is a function of time because the charge. Remember, the the capacitor is being charged, so the charge is accumulating, is increasing gradually. So you can see the charge Q here is a constant number. Okay, as time goes by. Remember, we are taking the, we're using Kirchhoff equation in during the, while it's being charged. Okay, all right. So that's going to be and then minus I R equals zero. I have this equation now. Um, what I want to do. Maybe I should call this star. It doesn't matter. Whatever. There it is. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to make the following assumption. I want to find I naught, the initial current. In other words, the moment I close the switch, the moment I close the switch, is the current. Okay. I want to find that current. And remember, as the as the capacitor is being charged, the current here is changing. It's a variable. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, so I want to find the initial current. This is initial current. And I also want to find, let's just say, the maximum charge, Q, which we're going to call big Q. So when I say big Q, it's the maximum charge, OK? Just a notation for now. This is just my own notation in my, uh, in my notes. OK, so at t equals 0, whoops, at t equals 0, let me, uh, hold on, let me just move this. At t equals zero. So what's going on? Well, at, at the, the moment I let me go back. The moment I close the switch, okay. The moment I close the switch here, uh, th there is a current in the circuit, correct? However, at that t equals zero, there is really no charge in the capacitor, correct? So at t equals zero, oops, uh, Q is zero. There's no charge at t equals zero. In the moment I close the switch, then it will start accumulating. But at that moment, there's no charge. So in this case, the voltage across the battery, excuse me, the resistor, is basically equal to the EMF. Okay. So and this current here is the initial current I naught. So in this case, I can argue and say that I naught is equal to the EMF over R. You got that? You see the logic behind it? So at t equals zero, let me let me let me draw it again. Where at t equals zero, here it is. I have the capacitor. Here is my uh, resistor, and here is the battery, and here is the switch right here. Okay, at t equals zero, what you will have is that this is the current right there is equal to I naught. This is the current at t equals zero. This whole thing at t equals zero that's the state okay where q here is zero there's no charge yet you got that this is of course emf 
and that's just a resistor. And the 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 uh, voltage across the resistor is also equal to I naught R. Got it? Okay. So this this is at t equals zero. All right. Later, however, let's say after we wait a long time, you know, something like uh, one millisecond, you know, okay, you know, a long time. After we wait later, when time is, we wait, we wait long enough. Okay, what's going to happen is that the charge Q becomes or gets close to charge B max. Okay, later time, you get that, and so eventually, as I told you, the um, the char charges, the charges, ceases or cease to flow. And therefore, the current goes to zero. Make sense? The current stops. In other words, the current is a max. The moment I close the switch, the current is a max. It's equal to I naught. And then now it is charging the capacitor. Okay? It's charging the capacitor, but the current is actually decreasing. You got that? Here is, here is a better way to, 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 uh, to explain it. Imagine this resistor is a light bulb okay i close the switch what am i going to see the moment i close the switch i'm going to see a bright light coming out of the light bulb and if i wait as i wait and i watch the whole thing what i'm going to see is that the light bulb the brightness will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer okay why because the value of the current is decreasing why because it is it, it, uh, um, the charges are being fed to the to the capacitor and that's the current as a result of that is is being consumed remember that the current is the charges so all these char charges are going into the uh, into the capacitor and it's the capacitor voltage becomes e this value e okay and this will go dim completely. In other words, when the capacitor is fully charged, the the light the light bulb, which is the resistor, is zero. Um, I'm sorry, the light bulb. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, w w uh, the light bulb brightness is goes completely dark, dim, gone. You see what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Um, so let me. I can write this in a different way. A mathematician notation at t goes to infinity don't take that infinity literally it's not like infinity like the age of the universe maybe just a couple of nanoseconds or something which is a long time uh, so what will happen uh, star becomes equation star becomes how how does it look like it becomes let's go back to star right here this is the star right here okay so the current becomes zero and I end up with this term right oops I if I use my pen for the mouse it doesn't show I need to use the mouse uh, e and q will be there but this i right here is going to be zero make sense okay so i is zero so you only have those two terms there so the star becomes like this oops The Q becomes a big Q over C, and that's equal to zero, and therefore the voltage across the capacitor is basically equal to the EMF. So that's Q max. Remember, this is Q is Q max. This is max right there. Okay? So it's equal to C E. Okay? All right. Now we do the analysis. I want to go a little bit deeper than that. Okay, this is just an explanation of what all that means. So let's do some analysis. By the way, this stuff is not explained in your book at all. Uh, he doesn't do a good job in that. So uh, I would, uh, yeah, it would be better for you if you are, as I take the, as I write those notes, you can write with me. Okay, so we know that we want to develop. Uh, an equation to describe the RC circuit, whether it is a charging of the capacitor or discharge of the capacitor. So pay attention. This is going to be some heavy, some heavy mathematics. Okay. So we know that the current, by definition, is dQ/dt, right? 
where q here is a function of time, right? For our case. Okay. Back to star. Go back to star. I assume you've written it already. Star says this. E minus q over c minus ir equals zero. And we said that i is a, uh, a variable. i here is a variable. And it's equal to dq dt. So I can write it this way. E minus, <coughs> oops, uh, mi uh, minus, not plus. minus over C minus DQ DT and let me put the R here equal zero okay so uh, and then let me clean it up a little bit more as you can see here before I go any further as you can see here I am I am looking at a uh, uh, first order differential equation right this is a first order differential equation DE that I can solve by the method of uh, uh, by the method of separation okay if you've never taken a uh, differential equation course that's okay it's really simple uh, you just uh, if you follow me you'll understand how that works the simplest differential equation of the first order and homogeneous this one is homogeneous which means equal zero all right so look what i'm going to do what i'm going to do because i have a uh, see you get this uh, let me change the color for now see as you can see i have q and q so I'm going to put those, the way you solve differential equation is you isolate those, you put them in one side of the equation, and then the dt on the other side. You see what I'm saying? So everything with q and dq, put them in one side, and then the dt on the other side, then you integrate both sides. That's how it works. Okay. All right. So the, here is one. Uh, so um, this can be written as this, r dq, I'm right here equals to e minus q over c dt please convince yourself that's what i'm doing is correct and then i can take this part right here and then take it to the other side and then in this case i'm going to get <clears throat> uh i'm going to get the following dq over e minus q over c equals 1 over r dt okay and as you can see there we go see i isolated it so now it's all in terms of dt here this is dq so i can just integrate both sides but before i do that i want to make it just a little bit better so if i multiply both sides by c on the bottom okay i want to i want to get rid of this fraction i want to get the c here okay this equal to this dq over C E minus Q, okay, over one over R C D T. Is that okay so far? Um, make it just a little bit better. I want the minus sign here, so I'm gonna swap these for a good reason. You'll appreciate it later. So I'll end up with. I just want to make it look better than that. So D Q is e over uh, Q minus C E equals minus one over R C dt and now i integrate both sides there we go okay of course this remember when i close the switch the charge is zero at some time t the charge is q correct oh we don't want to take the maximum charge i can put, put capital q there but just at some time during the time t and of course the time is from zero to some arbitrary time t that correspond to the q here okay and of course, now let me integrate both sides. As you can see here, this one is the, the left-hand side. Looks something like that. Dx from your calculus, x minus 5 or something like that, right? So what would that be equal? Natural log of x minus 5, right? So that's the same thing. So here we have, in this case, um, when I integrate that, and of course, then you, you, know, you plug in a to b, whatever, and so on, a to b, and so on. All right, so when we do that, I'm going to skip some steps. You can work it out. I'm going to get natural log of Q minus CE over, over uh, minus CE equals to minus T over RC. Okay, please convince yourself that this is the correct one. And then I'm going to solve for Q right here. Okay, so what I do, I 
put those to the power e to the, to the base e and this becomes this interesting equation q of t equal to c e 1 minus e to the minus t over rc very important equation okay let me just write it down in a better form now what is this guys c e this c e but c e is basically q max correct remember when the the, the charge reaches maximum value is equal to the CE, where E here is the potential across the battery and the capacitor. So I can write this thing as this. So Q sub of T equals to Q max 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. Okay? And please write it down in your note right now because we're going to be coming back to it several times. I don't want to be looking for it. So you write it down. Okay, now if I would graph this thing, how would it look like? Well, before I graph it for you, if you remember from your uh, basic math, if I have y equals to, let's say, uh, something like, uh, pick a number, say 5, 1 minus e to the minus uh, x, for example, okay, something like that, okay? How does it look like? Well, it's going to look something like that. It's an exponential function that will plateau like this like this where this is the asymptote and it's equal to 5 here see what I'm saying that's basically how it looks like yx okay you can use a grapher to see it but that's how it looks like okay uh, however if I have something like this y equals e to the minus x okay let's say yeah something like that so how does that going to look like well it looks it's, an, it's a decaying function oops sorry Look, uh, let me delete it. There we go. And that's going to look something like that. Try do it slowly. There we go. It's it's a it's a exponential decay. You know what I mean? So these are two important equa uh, graphs that you really need to be familiar with. Okay. So th it will th here we call that a plateau. So this going to look something like this. Let me graph it here. And I'm going to talk about it and just tell you what that means. So let me make a... If I talk and draw, I'll mess it up. So it's better to be silent and get a decent graph. There we go. Okay. So what it's going to look like, it's going to look something like that. Oops. Maybe I should just do it like that. Eventually, it's going to plateau. You see what I'm saying? And then right, it's going to be asymptotic. This is the asymptote right there. Trying my best to make it as horizontal as I can. So this is the charge Q of T. And this is the time T. Okay. And this is the Q max right here. Okay. And this is, of course, at time equals zero. In other words, when I close the switch, go back to that circuit if you want to, when I close the switch and the capacitor starts charging, it's going to start charging exponentially, okay? So it's going to be charging slowly, slowly at a certain, but it's not going to be charging forever. If there is a re, there is a, a, a value that it is trying to reach, which is the Q max. It will never reach it. It's just it's asymptotic, but it will get really close to it. You got that? Everybody see that? Okay, this is a very important graph. We'll come back to it. Okay, now, what about the current? So this is how the graph looks like. What about the current? Remember we said that the current can, uh, the moment you, you close the switch, the current uh, be, be a maximum, then it will attenuate, it will decay exponentially, something like that, okay? Let's see how. So what about the current? So how do I do that? Well, since <clears throat> I is equal to dQ dt, right? So what I want to do is I can do it in one of the two ways. I can do it uh, by taking the derivative, okay? By taking the derivative of this one right here and find the current. Let, let's do it. Let's do it this way. There are different ways to do it. Let me let me do it this way. So anyway, I assume that you have already written it in your notes. 
So let's take the derivative. Let's look at it and take the derivative. So that's going to be dq dt equals to, um, well, this is a, a number, right? So um, let me write it this way. Um, Q max, that's the first one. The derivative is 0. They have a minus here. And the derivative of the top with respect to 0. So I'm looking at it. I, I don't have this. So I'm, I'm doing it in my head. I hope I'm not making a mistake. That's going to be a plus uh, 1 over RC. 1 over RC e to the minus e to the minus t over RC. Is that right, guys? And then if I uh, take the Q here, so I get Q max. I don't need to write max because it's a capital letter. It just uh, that means it is, uh, there we go. And then, so this is the current I, at, at, you know, as a function of time, okay? This one is I as a function of time. Of course, this should be the maximum current. Well, let's see. What is, you remember we said that, uh, back to this. Uh, I thought I have it somewhere. There it is right here. Look at that. Q max is C V C E, so we have, uh, but Q is C E, and C E. So Q over C is E, right? So go back to this. So Q over C right here is E. So that's E over R, E to the minus T over R C. Check this out. Well, what is that? Well, that's I max. Make sense? You know, this is the EMF over all that. You can't get more than that current. So this is I max. I can call it max or I naught. I think we called it I naught, whichever. So it is I naught E to the minus T over RC. And this is I of T. Okay, there we go. So now, there we go. So if I try to graph it, how does it look like? Oh, if I can graph this thing. There we go. Gotta go slowly. All right. If I graph it, so that means just like this exponential function right here, it starts from what? Well, it starts from 1, because there is a 1 here. If it was a 5 here, it becomes a 5 here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so this, it starts from I ma I naught, which is I max, and then it, it uh, tapers down exponentially, decays exponentially, like that, like this, exponentially, okay? And this is the time axis. And that's I as a function of time. Okay. You got it, guys? Okay. All right. Next. Now I want to define something else. Okay? This is some mathematics for you. I hope you've got... Uh, it's, it's, I don't think uh, I find them difficult. I hope not. Anyway, we define what do we call the time constant. Time constant. This is a 100% uh, engineering term, which is tau, tau, the Greek letter tau, and it's equal to RC. In other words, look, it's every equation here, the RC shows up. See that? RC. And then for the charge right there, the RC shows up. Okay? So I can rewrite that as, so for example, for the current, the current is equal to I naught E to the minus T over tau. And for the charge, Q is equal to big Q, 1 minus E to the minus T over tau, and so on. You got that? Okay, so this is called the time constant. Well, what does it mean? Well, it's a way of, okay, what is a time constant? What is it? It basically tells you how fast it's going to charge or discharge. Okay, for example, let's say, for example, I want to call, let's say I say one time, uh, it's not measured in seconds, okay? I mean, it is, the unit of it is seconds, okay? There is no doubt about it. But usually it's, the way the engineers use it is, 
uh, it takes two time constant to do that. It takes three times or 1.25 time constant or double the time constant. So it's always written, it's always things are the unit of time constant tau. You see what I'm saying? Let me, let me show what that means. Um, let's say, for example, suppose t equals tau. Okay, just to show you what that means. Okay. In other words, I have this equation. Let's do. Let's uh, let's start with uh, say the. Uh, let, let me start with the current first. Okay, let's start with the current. I, I'm going to do both of them. Okay, let me start with the current. And suppose t equals tau. So what will happen? E equals i naught e to the minus what tau over tau or t over t whatever. So that's going to be i naught one over e. Correct. Now use your calculator and get what is one over e. Remember e is what. Uh, 2.71828, right? I think. So 1 over e, do that, you'll end up with this uh, 0.368 i naught. Okay? What does that mean? It means after one time constant, see, it's, you know, one time constant is just one, one tau. After one tau, the current is. 36.8% of its original value. See that? Yes? Everybody see that? That's really the meaning of it. 37, which is roughly 37%. You see what I'm saying? 36.8, which is roughly 37%. Okay? Let's try it for the, 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 the charge. So we have the charge Q. It's right here. The charge is Q, 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. Remember, the charge is increasing, and then it eventually it will plateau, right? It looks something like that, like that. Well, this is the big charge here. It plateaus like that. Okay, so I, let's say after, uh, let's suppose t equals tau. What does that mean? Let's see how many. So at Q is equal to Q, uh, 1 minus e to the minus 1. Is that right? So basically, Q1 minus 1 over E, and then you calculate that, okay? Calculate in your, with, your, with your calculator, and given that E is this, okay? It, turn, it will turn out to be, and I'm copying this from my notes, 0.632Q. I think I did it right, yeah. Q. In other words, after one time constant, one tau, whoops, one time constant, uh, the charge is roughly 63.2% of max. Got it? That's just the meaning of it. So when you read the time constant, that's really the meaning of it. Okay? Okay, good. Now let me do the discharge, and that's probably the last topic, and then uh, hopefully uh, I, I want to do at least two problems for you. I'm going to show you how this all that stuff works. Uh, let me do the discharge very quickly. Again, this is another analysis for discharge. So go back to the whoops. Go back to the to the very first circuit that we drew, the one I told you to keep. And then what we're going to do? Let me go back to it. Right here. Okay. Now this time, what we're going to do is I am going to throw the switch at B. Okay, I don't want to mess it up, but I want to throw the switch at B, so I'm going to put it like that. Okay, uh, let me put it in different color. So I'm going to put it at B like that. Okay, that would be discharge. Why discharge? Well, look, there is no battery. Look at that. The battery is gone. See, this is open, remember? So the battery now is gone. Okay, so what will happen? Well, here's what's happened. When you throw that, think of it like, imagine you have the resistor is a light bulb. What's gonna happen is that the light bulb is lit and then there'll be a discharge and that's, this light's gonna be dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it goes off completely. What's gonna happen is that the, uh, what will happen is that the, the, uh, the, the capacitor is fully charged and then I throw the switch on B that charge is feeding into the resistor, the, the light bulb, and as a result of that, it's going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. You get that? Okay.
Let's go back. <clears throat> Discharging the capacitor. Capacitor. Okay. Okay. So, so begin by, begin with, rather, begin with a capacitor, CAP, uh, that is completely charged, okay? So what's going to happen then, okay? So here, initially, before I put the switch, okay, to B, okay, initially, the, uh, the potential difference is Q over C, uh, maybe I should call it, uh, I'm sorry, I think I called it big, two, big Q. Big Q over C, right, initially. And the current is zero, is that right? Okay. Now, throw the switch. On B, okay? So what will happen is that the capacitor uh, will discharge through the resistor. Remember, there is no battery. Remember that. There is no battery. The battery is gone when we put it on B. Okay? Uh, now, since there is no battery, the E is equal to zero, the EMF. Okay, the battery is, I mean, remember, we. I'm, uh, I'm referring to Kirchhoff uh, circuit, the Kirchhoff assuming, equation, this one. Uh, what is it? Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, V minus IR equals zero, and this V is, uh, uh, what is it, the Q equals CV, what is it equal to, uh, Q over C. So that's going to be E minus uh, Q over C minus IR. Remember that equation? Equation star, now I remember. Remember, go back to equation star. So back to equation star. And what we want to do, we want to apply the same equation, but this time, uh, that it, without a battery, okay? So we're going to take the battery out. So we are left with this equation right here. So in this case, it becomes, uh, it will become minus Q over C minus IR equals zero. And of course, we know that I is equal to DQ DT. I can plug it in there. So that's going to be uh, minus Q over C minus DQ DT r equals zero and as you can see we have a first order differential equation first order de that is separable i can separate you know it's just the same technique of separation except this one is a little bit easier as you can see so um <clears throat> separation of uh, separate the the variables i'm going to end up with something like that dq over q equals to minus one over rc dt and then we integrate both sides. And well, how are we going to integrate it? Well, let's see. Um, I'm going to integrate it like that. Is that right? Now we're starting from what? The charge. Well, we're starting from big Q for a maximum, remember? We're starting from a maximum charge to some arbitrary charge at some time t. Make sense? From zero to t. So, I mean, we don't want to go to completely zero, okay? Let's just say some arbitrary time. It wouldn't be interesting, would it? And then we take the derivative, uh, excuse me, the integration. So it's going to be natural log of Q over big Q equals minus T over RC. And clean it up. And we will end up with this one. Q of T equals big Q, which is Q max, E to the minus T over RC. Now this is interesting. See that? This is the discharge of the capacitor. Charge. Discharge of capacitor. See how different from the charging of the capacitor? Remember that? It's pl the, the plateau. See the difference? That the difference is this one right here. See what I'm saying? And that one because it, it means it plateaus like that. 
right? Where this one, it means you're starting with you're starting with big max, and then it it uh, it. Uh, if I do it, if I dot it, it's actually I get a better curve. So anyway, so you get that. So it actually uh, it decays exponentially, not like that. This plateaus right here. Okay, so that's the difference. That's a discharge. See the difference between the two? Okay, good. Now. Uh, again, I'm going to take the same equation right here, and I'm going to take the derivative of it because I want to see how the current is behaving. Okay, what about the current? So, what about current? Well, I'll just take the derivative of it. So, when we take the derivative of it, it's going to be dQ dt is equal to this big Q, just a constant. <clears throat> so that's going to be uh, minus uh, 1 over RC, e to the minus t over RC, and, and that will be minus q over RC, e to the minus t over RC, right? And then we make the same argument that we did in the previous uh, previous analysis, that basically equal to I naught e to the minus t, there's a minus there, t, uh, t over RC, or tau, remember tau? and this is the current i at any time t. Now watch this, this is interesting. Look at this current during the discharge and look at the current during the charging. Let me go back and just show it to you. Uh, there it is. Same expression. In other words, the current in both situations is decaying in exactly the same way. You see what I'm saying? So during charge, and during the charge, the current is actually the same thing exactly. That's what's interesting about the current, how the current behaves. So this is charging, and that's discharge, okay? All right, good. Uh, what else, what else? Oh, one more thing. Um, I want to show you something else. This is interesting. The asymptotic behavior of the RC circuit. Okay, let's just talk about that. The asymptotic, asymptotic behavior of the RC circuit. I forgot to mention the RC circuit are used a lot in, uh, in uh, uh, you know, in industry. One of the most obvious one that you are using all the time is the uh, windshield wiper. You know, you set your windshield wiper, the speed, you know, to go fast or, you know, slow and so on. Well, that's basically an RC circuit. Uh, so you want to go fast, it means that the discharge is quick. Uh, to the resistor and so on. So you, the setting really depends on how much time that it's between. The time between each time the wiper's blade work is the time of discharge of the capacitor. You see what I'm saying? Then you have the LC circuit, which is basically the blinker in your car. It's an LC circuit. Okay, we're not going to cover it this semester. I usually don't cover it even under normal circumstances where we go to class and stuff. I don't care. They, they, they are, I mean, if you understand the RC circuit, I guarantee you, you're not going to have any issue teaching yourself the LC circuit or the RLC circuit. They both kind of, they all uh, have the same format of equation, the same analysis. So, uh, anyway, just for the lack of time, we just don't have the time to cover everything. All right. Uh, here is a question. We want to know the asymptotic behavior of the following circuit of this circuit. Here it is, let me make a drawing of it. It's basically just another, another RC circuit with just some numbers in it. So here is the resistor, here is the capacitor, <clears throat> and here is the EMF. This is 12 ohm, this is 3 microfarad, Okay, and this we have nine volts. Okay, this is the MF. Okay, um, so here is the question. First question. Immediately, after 
S is closed, the switch. It's not shown, I guess. Uh, S is closed. S means switch, uh, which is a T equals zero, okay? I want to know, here is a question for you. What is the value of Q? Sorry, let me make it small Q. What's the value of small Q? Uh, what is the voltage across the capacitor? Uh, what is the current? And what is the voltage across the resistor? I'm talking here immediately, okay? We're not talking at any time T. At T equals zero. What's going on here? Well, remember, right after, there is no charge yet in the, in the capacitor. So Q is zero. Okay? A Q is zero, well, that means also the voltage across the capacitor. This allows EV. The voltage across the capacitor is also zero. Makes sense, right? And what else? The current, remember I told you, the current is actually a max. So the current here is, is a max, which is equal to EMF over R, okay? So if I want to calculate it with these numbers here, it's going to be 9 over 12. Is that right? So that will be equal to 0.75 Am. Okay? So this is the max. So I max is equal to 0.75 Am. Got it? Okay, and the last one, what about V sub R? The voltage across the resistor. Well, that's just the EMF. So that will be uh, I naught or max, I'm switching between those two notation, times the resistance 12 for R, and that'll be 9 volt, okay? So it matches the battery, matches the battery. Okay? Good. Now, the next question. So that's basically. That's one, uh, we're taking the extreme here. First, immediately after the switch is closed. And now, what about after a long time, you know, asymptotically, if you will? So, after a long time. All right, so what's going to happen here? Well, after a long time, the capacitor is fully charged, yes? The capacitor is fully charged, therefore, no current uh, f uh, flowing through, right? Okay? So, here in this case, well, hold on, hold on, before we do anything, let's go back to the graph. Remember the graph for the char, for the, now after a long time, we're still doing charging. So, this is how the, the, uh, the charge. That's the charge, right? So after a long time, the capacitor is fully charged. That means now it is big Q. The current, remember the, the graph of the current? It's asymptotic. Uh, excuse me, not asymptotic. What am I saying? Uh, it's an exponential decay. So it's going to be something like that. So after a long time, no current. See, asymptotically, it's zero. Okay? So no current goes through. You see what I'm saying? So if no current goes through, what is, so in this case, I is zero. Oops, sorry. Zero M. And well, what about the voltage across the resistor? It's going to be zero. Why? Because this is I R and I is zero times R and that's zero. See what I'm saying? In other words, light dims and eventually is off. Okay. And what about, <clears throat> um, what about the voltage across the capacitor? Well, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to, remember, Q equals CV. So, V is equal to Q, the big Q, after a long time, over C. Well, what is that? That's just the EMF. So, it's basically, for our case here, it's 9 volt. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? And did we miss anything? Uh, oh, and the charge. So, what the, the charge, of course, after a long time, is equal to the charge maximum, just like this graph shows right here. Okay? So, and what is this charge? What is the charge max is equal to? Well, it's equal to CV 
and the so C E, right? Well C is equal to go back to the graph to the to the diagram the circuit. Uh, C is uh, three microfarad and uh, E is uh, is uh, nine volt. Go back and plug it in. So that's gonna be um, three microfarad times nine volt and that will be equal to twenty seven uh, micro coulomb, which is the this is the Q max. You got that guys? So let me make a quick summary of this table. This is kind of a cool table that I like it. So here we have at t equals zero, here at t equals infinity. Remember infinity don't take it literally, it just means long time. So here we have vc equals zero, qc equals zero, i is equal to over that which is i max and VR is the, the EMF. Here, however, VC equals the EMF. Uh, Q is C, which is max, and that's equal to CE. And then uh, I is zero, and then VR, you know, totally dim. You got that, okay? Good. And of course, we can graph them, and I think you have an idea how the graph those look like. So I'm not gonna go through that. Uh, I'm, I want to go to the problems right now. Let's see. Um, just give me a second, please. <clears throat> um, the pro Oh, that is one homework problem that has to do with... Uh, which one is it? Uh, let me look for it. Hold on. Here we go. Number 33. I'm not going to go through the book. I'll just read it for you. I believe number 33 is a homework problem. Let's do it short problem it says a capacitor in an RC circuit uh, charged to 75 percent of its of its uh, maximum value okay in 1.4 second charged okay this is you need to read the, the language he said not discharge charge and you know which formula to use for charging not discharge okay now he's asking what is the time constant of the circuit. In other words, he's asking for tau, okay? So since it's charged, that means the formula, the proper formula is this, the plateau thing. There we go, right? Not this one. Why? That's for discharge. You see what I'm saying? So you want to read the problem and make sure you're using the right formula. So the RC circuit is charged, not discharged. So now we go back here. He said that it's charged to its max, 75% of its maximum value. Well, the maximum value is Q, big Q. So this one is 0.75 above big Q equals Q, one minus E to the minus T over tau. And then the Qs cancel out, then you work out the math. The math is pretty easy, as you can see here. So uh, it becomes, when I move this one to the other side here, I will get uh, 0.25 equals e to the minus t over tau. And then you work out the math. The math is pretty easy, as you can see here. Oh, and he gives us t. This is the value of t right here, right? So we can just plug it in there. And when we plug it in, you'll end up with tau equals, I'm just reducing it. 1.4 over 1.3, what is it? 1.3, what did I get to 1.3? I'm skipping steps. Uh, you fill it in, please. And then you'll end up with, if I get it right, I, I got the answer that the time constant is equal to that. Okay? That's the answer. Okay, guys? Okay. Uh, simple problem. There's one more I want to do. Oh, yes, this is a nice one. 
Okay. Uh, this is not from your homework. The homework is actually pretty easy problems. If you have any question, please let me know. Um, uh, let me do this one. This one is kind of a cool problem from my notes. It's not in the book. And that will end uh, this lecture. Um, uh, it's been over an hour. I tried to keep the video at about an hour. Okay, here's another problem. <clears throat> okay, it says you have an RC circuit. Uh, there are two questions, two parts. Part A is easy. It says after how many time constant, how many tows is is the charge of the capacitor one fourth of its initial value? Okay. After how many time constants is the charge of the capacitor is one fourth of its initial value? Now, what's going on here, guys? Is it charging or discharging? It's discharging. See, it is. It's discharging. He said, "How many time constant? How long is going to take it until it reaches one fourth of its initial value?" So it's discharging, okay? So if it's discharging, so I'm just going to use this formula. How many time constant? He's basically asking for uh, T in terms of tau. Okay, and then he says the this Q right here, the small Q, is one-fourth of its uh, original value, which is the initial value is, is big Q. So that's going to be uh, one-fourth big Q equals Q e to the minus t over tau the q's cancel out i end up with and then you work it out so natural log of 0.25 equals minus t over tau and then i'm going to solve for t because i want to term in terms of how many time constant when you work it out you'll end up with this 1.38 tau so it is 1.38 taus if you will how many time constant this is it okay until it is reaches the one fourth of its original value. Okay, that's an easy problem, easy part. The the, the harder part is part B, and it is uh, kind of a it has some insight into it. He says um, the energy stored in the capacitor decreases with time okay makes sense you know it's, it's losing charge so the energy there is, is is decreasing as the capacitor as the capacitor discharges now here's a question after how many same question actually how many time constant tau is the stored energy One fourth the initial value. One fourth the initial value of what? The stored energy. Okay? He's not talking about Q. The stored energy. Well, we don't have an expression for the stored energy. In other words, how does the stored energy look like? Does it, uh, when, it when, when the capacitor is discharging, does it discharge? Um, I mean, what's the behavior of that? Well, this is interesting. Here is how it works. Go back to the charging expression for discharge. Q equals Q e to the minus uh, T over tau, right? Pay attention. Now, before I do anything, what is the an expression for the stored energy of a capacitor? One half CV squared, right? Another one, this is the one I'm going to use, is uh, Q squared over 2C. Remember, there were three of them. I'm going to use this one. And guess what? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this thing right here and plug it in there. And then I will have an expression for the the uh, the energy, the stored energy. Okay? So before I do that, so I want to, uh, I want to do it slowly. So let me get the Q squared first. So qua uh, square both sides here. 
e to the minus 2t over tau, is that right? Now divide both sides by 2c, so that's going to be q squared over 2c equals big Q squared over 2c e to the minus 2t over tau, is that right? Well, what is that? Well, what is this? This is basically the stored energy as a function of time, and this is the maximum stored energy, because this is the Q0, if you will, for like max or whatever, minus 2t over tau. There we go. Now I have an expression for the stored energy. As you can see, the expression here is what? Um, it is a uh, uh, exponential. In other words, the just like the charge, here is we start. Here is the uh, u of t. Just like the charge is starting with u naught, it's going to drop down. Sorry, it's going to drop down exponentially the decay. But what's the difference between this one and the charge q of t? Q of t is q naught e to the minus t over tau. What's the difference between them? Well, the difference between them is this two. Look at that. Let me go back and put a different color. See, there is no t. There is no two. What does that mean? It means the the energy actually drops quicker. In other words, here is the the if if I'm going to draw that here, it's going to be something like that. And excuse my it's going to be slower, okay? It's going to taper down slower, where this is going to drop like faster, okay? Two, you have that two. You see what I'm saying? In other words, it will lose energy, stored energy quicker than the charge. That's really the meaning of that equation, those two equations, if when you compare them with each other. Anyway, so back to our uh, formulation. So we go back to this. I'll keep it right. So now, he says when it's one-fourth, so that's one-fourth u, u naught equal u naught e to the minus 2t over tau. Use cancel out. You know, you do the rest, the, the, the same stuff. You end up with the natural log of 0.25 <clears throat> minus 2t over tau. And then you solve for t, and it turned out to be 0.89t. Okay? Now, look at oh, uh, 0.89 uh, tau. Now, compare this with, for the same amount of charge, you know, the same, one-fourth, one-fourth. Look at that. The For the charge is 1.38. It takes longer. See that? So for to lose one-fourth of the charge, it, ta it is 1.38 time constant, where for the energy, however, it's actually much, you know, a little bit faster, a shorter time to lose it. Why? Because of the, the, the steepness of the curve here. It's, it's steeper than this one. You see what I'm saying? Okay, and I think I'm just going to stop right here. I hope this has been a good lecture for you. Uh, take notes, uh, and uh, well, let me know if you have any questions, okay? Bye-bye.